Hi, I'm Ross Anderson. I'm Professor of Security Engineering at Cambridge University at the Computer Laboratory. And Michelle van Eten asked me to record this particular segment of the course because I was one of the founders of the field of security economics um, back 15 years ago. Now, the first widely cited paper on the subject is a paper I wrote in December 2001, Why Information Security is Hard and Economic Perspective. And since then it's grown into a field with over 100 re active researchers and it's a big growth area. Uh, but I wasn't the only founder of this field and so um, in this segment I'm going to talk about what led up to that paper and how it developed after that. Now the traditional world of information security from the 1960s when we started getting shared computer systems up until the 1990s saw information security as a really technical subject which was about controlling what a firm's staff could do for the most part and also keeping the bad guys out. So a bank system would have access controls that would say what tellers could do, what accountants could do, what managers could do and so on. And each firm's systems were pretty much isolated from other firms so if the Midland Bank screwed up then that didn't affect Barclays and so on and so forth so people could run their systems in isolation. But the internet really changed that game because all of a sudden the arrival of the internet meant that failures of security um, in one firm could harm another firm. And we got a big example of that in 1998 when insecure um, Unix computer systems um, at a hospital in Oregon were used to attack an ISP in New York. This was a wake up call for everybody. Now there had been some early rumblings about the importance of economics and information security. Back in 1991, Carl Lanver wrote an NRC report about Department of Defense concerns that no matter how much the Pentagon spent, they couldn't persuade mainstream computer vendors like IBM and Microsoft to produce more secure products uh, for the defense market in any sustainable way. The mainstream firms would be inexorably drawn back to providing mass market products. A couple of years after that, in 1993, I wrote a paper, Why Crypto Systems Fail, which noted um, that uh, there was much better consumer protection in the USA than in the UK, in that British banks were able to dump the costs of fraud on their, on, on their customers. And so you would expect that UK banks would spend less money on fraud, but actually they spent more. And this was a real conundrum for me. I couldn't understand it. In 1996, Hal Varian, then at the University of Berkeley, wrote a paper on the economic aspects of personal privacy and wondered why it was that markets didn't seem to be able to fix problems about privacy. That's something that we'll be talking about in greater detail in the fifth lecture, but it was again something that got us thinking. And so the spark that got this thing going was when I met Hal in May 2000 at the Auckland um, um, IEEE Security and Privacy Conference. And Hal was wondering about whether you could make online payment systems work better if you allocated liability properly. People were at that time trying to develop online payment systems and it wasn't going so well. Um, I was worried about this problem of why UK banks spent more than US banks despite having less liability for fraud. And we were both interested in antivirus and DDoS issues. Why was it that people weren't spending as much money on antivirus as you'd rationally expect them to? And the key insight that we got is that information goods and services markets are prone to monopolies. Now there are three reasons for this. There are network effects, there are low marginal costs and there are technical lock-in. And we're going to discuss all of these in, in detail later in this lecture. But where all of these are present, you tend to get monopolies. And that means that you get market races for dominance of every new market and market niche that opens up. And these market races, and the lock-in games that people play around them really undermine information security in lots of interesting ways, which again, we're going to discuss later. Sometime after that, we had the dreadful events of 9-11, and one of the things that became clear was that um, overreaction would be inevitable and damaging, so what can academics do? Well, we thought the best thing that we could do would be to help to build up security economics as a discipline, so that once politicians were ready to listen, we would have solid analysis and data and recommendations to offer. So um, after I gave a keynote talk on security economics at SOSP in Banff, which became the Why Information Security is Hard paper, 
I went on to Berkeley to work with Hal um, on security economics. And um, we got a, a wave of results come out over the next few months as various people got interested. The take home message is that where Alice guards the system and Bob pays the cost of failure, you can expect trouble. And network effects are only one of many ways in which platforms can become insecure as a result of poor incentives. Now, you then have to start thinking about what you can do about the problem, and if vulnerabilities are an externality, a side effect of transactions like environmental pollution, perhaps we can fix them with markets, just like you have cap and trade markets for CO2. Um, what really causes privacy failure? Again, the thing that Hal had worried about in 1996. How much should a firm spend on security? Of course, this is the bottom line for firms in the Valley. Should the security budget be 1% of the IT budget or 10% or what? And so this led to two things. The first was the foundation of vulnerability markets. iDefense and Tipping Point were set up at the time. And the second was the first workshop on the economics of information security, both of which happened in 2002. And at that first workshop, we saw a wide variety of papers. We had the first paper on behavioural economics of privacy from Alessandro Kisti. We had papers on vulnerability markets and externalities from Gene Camp at Harvard. We had stuff on economics of standards from Barb Fox at Microsoft. And that was a, a key thing, obviously, from the point of view of industry players. There are talks on information sharing. Could you get banks to share information on fraudsters? Could you get utilities to share information on attempted hacks on control systems, how would you get them to overcome their risk aversion and the lawyer's tendency to keep everything in-house? And, and then you have people starting to look at returns on security investment. So we suddenly realised that we had the beginnings of a coherent and important subject and things just went on from there.